I recently found a flag in Git that gives you more visibility into commits that you're making. And I wanna talk through it in this short video. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, so let's chat a little bit about Git. Obviously, if I came in here and added something like a heading, here I'm in a Git repository and I might wanna add this, I could just add everything in the present directory and then go ahead and commit those changes with a message. Now, obviously, usually kind of if you have multiple files, you're gonna be checking the Git status as well. So next, let's go ahead and add several items. So I'm gonna come in here and we'll add like a paragraph here and we'll just say like lorem 30. So we got a bunch of stuff in there and then maybe a script tag here as well. We'll just console log high. All right, so we've got a little JavaScript and we've got a little HTML. So I wanna come over here and this time I'm gonna do git add and I'm gonna use the p flag. This is the flag that I wanna talk about in this video because what it's going to do is show you each kind of grouping of text that you're adding in each file. It calls them hunks and you can see here, I can add it, I can not add it, I can add it for the whole file. We've got all those options under the question mark here. It shows me I can Y stage this hunk, not stage it, I can quit, I can stage this hunk and everything later or not, and then I can also edit the file as well. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and add everything, and now we're set and ready to go. By breaking it down into these hunks, it's really helpful to review everything before you actually commit it. Now, it is important to know here, if I come over here, let's add another file. And if we add a console log in here, this is not gonna be caught by the P flag because all it's doing is looking over files that's already tracking. So if I come in here and say git add, and then I use the p flag, it'll say no changes because I haven't made any changes to files that I'm currently tracking. So let's go ahead and add this the way we typically would. So I can use the capital A flag to add everything. And let's go ahead and just do git status because that's usually a good pattern as well to see which files you're actually touching. In this case, I've said that there's a new file called index.js and I'll just say yes, add index.js. So if I come over here, you'll see that now this is being tracked by git. Now what happens when you have multiple different hunks? All right, so I fast forwarded a bit, added several things, and now I've got some new sections in each of these files. I've got some changes here, and I've also got some changes over this way. So let's go ahead and do this flag again. So I'll do git add. We'll use the p flag, and notice it's going to break this up by hunk. So in this file, I have two different hunks. The first one starts right here, and I can go ahead and accept it with the y flag. Now it shows me later down in the same file a second hunk. If I wanted to, I could have added them both at the same time with the letter a, but here I'll go ahead and say y again and accept that hunk. Now we go to the next file where I have two hunks as well. I've got this one right here and I've also got the next one. So in this case, I use the letter A and add everything in this file. Now I can check all this very quickly with a git status and see that I've modified both of those files. Once again, if I have a new file, that P flag will not track that. So let's go ahead and commit this and then let's think about how we might wanna extend this out to include new files and old files alike. So let's come over here. I'm gonna add a new file, say index.css. And I'll add one little declaration and come back over here and let's go ahead and add this here. Okay, so now we've modified an existing file and we've also added a new file. So here, let's clear this out. I'm gonna say git add p and then let's go ahead and also add git add and you can see it knows what I'm doing already, right? So I'm, what I'm gonna do is add all of this and then just check the git status. Now you could also commit off the end of this as well, but what I'm essentially doing is going first of all through all my modified file, files, then I'm adding everything that includes new files and then I'm checking the git status. So it'll do these one after the other. So first of all, yes, I'll stage that hunk. It'll add the new file, and then it shows me with a git status. Now, like we saw a moment ago, we can actually add all of this all together. So here I could add the commit message at the end, like made changes. Now we need to actually make changes for this to work. So let's go ahead and do that. And then add all this, you'll see then I have to modify this and say, yes, that's fine. And then move on right through the process. But notice now it's actually committed this as well. Now, obviously, I don't want to type that out every time, so I just made a simple git alias, which you can very quickly do in a .zshrc file or whatever you happen to be using for your shell. There's one way to make me not trust you as a developer, and that's if you say you understand git. That being said, this little flag has been really helpful to me as it gives you more insight into what you're actually committing. If you have any suggestions for future workflows with git or other things I could explore, let me know in the comments below. But thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.